ultimate solution of it, and if so, how and why? Well, I, I believe that the question of Trieste is a question which can be solved. Uh, of course, uh, speaking of Trieste, one uh, is reminded of uh, the various occasions in which the Trieste question has become an explosive matter and has been a cause for considerable excitement. But uh, I believe that uh, through diplomatic contacts, it is possible to bring about a solution acceptable to both sides. And uh, I can assure you that uh, my government will do its utmost to bring about such a solution. We believe that a solution of that problem would not only benefit my country and Italy, but would be of uh, a considerable importance to the, uh, the whole of Europe and the world. What about your relations with Italy? Are they still pretty tense as they were at the time of the trouble? The relations with Italy, uh, of Yugoslavia with Italy, have considerably improved since last fall. Uh, as it is well known, uh, the troops that were at the border on both sides at that time have been withdrawn. The difficulties in trade which occurred on that occasion have been removed and trade is going on. And uh, I can say that it is a rather important trade in its size and uh, by the commodities exchanged and of considerable interest to both partners. So that the relations are now normal relations. Uh, there are no particular tensions at the border that would uh, justify whatever concern. But of course the question of Trieste is one that is pending and uh, as I said, is one which can be solved and I believe that uh, efforts which are being made may bring about. Mr. Matthias, may I ask you a specific question? Uh, how do you envisage, if any, a solution to the vital problem of Trieste? Well, as I said, uh, uh, the Trieste question is a matter of uh, serious consideration by governments. And uh, I don't believe that uh, at this stage I would doing right if I would go into specific, possible specific solutions. There is of course not only one way in which it could be solved and uh, I think it might be perhaps best if I refrain my remarks from going into details. Aren't there some talks going on in London at the moment? Uh, well, uh, you have mentioned something which I read in the papers here. I could uh, neither confirm nor deny it. Well, these uh, secret talks which were reported uh, in London out of Belgrade say that the uh, Western powers, that is Britain, France and Yugoslavia, are now in secret conference and that they envisage uh, bringing uh, Italy into these conferences later. Now, do you know what they're discussing? Well, uh, what was uh, uh, reported in the press was, uh, I think it was a slip on your side, was not Britain and France, it was Britain and the United States and Yugoslavia. That, uh, that's what I read in the papers, and I said I would neither confirm nor deny it. Now, if uh, such negotiations are taking place, I suppose uh, the only object would be to, to explore the possibilities of uh, a, a compromise solution between Italy and Yugoslavia. Well, while we're on the subject, uh, Mr. Matthias, the last thing that Mr. Molotov suggested at this uh, four-power conference in Berlin was that the situation or the case of Trieste be rediscussed in the Security Council of the United Nations. Now, what has happened to the case of Trieste there? Uh, the Russian government, as a matter of fact, uh, last fall in October, has brought the question of Trieste to the Security Council. And uh, the formal proposal by the Russians was that the Security Council appoint a governor of Trieste. In the Security Council, the debate on this question was postponed. It was postponed first two or three times for a certain period of time. And finally, it was postponed pending the results of efforts being made to solve the Trieste question. And, and these, these discussions are the... Uh, well, these efforts are being made in what form, as I said, I could neither confirm nor deny. Well, to move further east, Mr. Ambassador, uh, your country has recognized communist China. 
Now, do you envisage uh, Communist China splitting off with Moscow as you have? Our recognition of China was a declaratory act, I mean a unilateral act on our side, and it was prompted by the belief that uh, the present regime in Peking is the government on the continent mainland of China. A uh, consideration similar to the consideration of several other governments. We do not have, nor did we have, uh, any relations whatsoever with uh, the government in Peking. I mean, no uh, correspondence or uh, ambassadors exchanged. Now, as to the future attitude of China in their relationship with Russia, I think it is rather safe to say that China uh, is not likely uh, to become or to remain a satellite of Moscow. I suppose that uh, uh, China being a, a great nation will uh, probably strive to find her place in the world and this I think in association with the present Russia would be impossible. I, I think it would be very difficult to imagine that the present regime in Russia could maintain so close relations on the basis of equality. And that's what I think the Chinese will ultimately seek. Now, in what way uh, this uh, cause of friction in general will develop in the relations between the two countries is very difficult to predict. But the friction there is beneath the surface and will increase in the future I am firmly convinced. Well, Mr. Ambassador, in Europe, do you see any signs in the satellite powers uh, that surround Russia, any signs of their breaking away a little, or perhaps uh, taking more of the independent stand of Yugoslavia, while at the same time remaining communist? Well, of course, uh, the position of the Russian satellites in Europe uh, is uh, considerably different from the position of China not only because of the size of the nations, but uh, the whole background and many other considerations and geographical position, not least. I don't believe that uh, we should expect any dramatic changes in the next days or very next future. But uh, it would be, of course, uh, extremely depressing if we would uh, come to the conclusion, and I cannot come to it, that the present state of affairs has to be perpetual. I think that the whole experience of history uh, gives sufficient proof that such kind of relationship as the Russians have imposed on the countries which are under their domination will not last. There is some Mr. hope. Well, of course, uh, I think I am in my, on my side, I would say more than hope. It's a conviction. Mr. Ambassador, may I ask you the final question? Has there been any government-inspired anti-Americanism in Yugoslavia? In other words, what the Yugoslavia people actually think about uh, Americans right now? Well, I'd like to, to point out, uh, first of all, on the first part of the question, I, 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 I think uh, you'll believe me if I simply deny it and say there is nothing like that, but I'd rather stick to the later part of it and say that you can hardly open a paper in Yugoslavia, you can hardly have a statement by a government representative or a political figure who would not mention in the statement, as our president in his message to our National Assembly after the elections did, in expressing our firm belief in the increase of friendly relations with the United States and the recognition to the assistance Yugoslavia has received in the economic, finance and military field from the United States and is still receiving. Thank you very much, Mr. Ambassador. Thank you. It's a privilege to have you here tonight. Thank you. Thank it was a pleasure on my side. The opinions that you've heard our speakers express tonight have been entirely their own. The editorial board for this edition of the Longines Chronoscope was Larry Lesser and Ned Calmer. Our distinguished guest was His Excellency Leo Matzes, permanent representative to the United Nations for Yugoslavia. To watchmakers of the old school, such as Longines, pride of workmanship is evident in every detail of every operation. In a watch, in truth, the smallest cog is just as important as the biggest wheel. Now, pride of workmanship made Longines the world's most honored watch. Honored at world's fairs by 10 grand prizes and 28 gold medals. Honored at government observatories with countless prizes and citations for accuracy. Honored as official watch by sports and contest associations the world over. Now, for all who have an appreciation of the fine and the beautiful, 
The pride of workmanship, so evident in every Longines watch, makes an irresistible appeal. Our particular message at this time is an important one. If you wish to buy and own, or proudly give, just about the finest watch made anywhere in all the world, your choice might well be Longines, the world's most honored watch, priced as low as $70,150. And regardless of the price you pay for your watch, it's made with that pride of workmanship which made Longine the world's most honored watch, the world's most honored gift, premier product of the Longine Whitnor Watch Company, since 1866, maker of watches of the highest character. We invite you to join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday evening at this same time for the Longine Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issue of the hour. Broadcast on behalf of Longines, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, distinguished companion to the world honored Longines. This is Frank Knight reminding you that Longines and Whitnor watches are sold and serviced from coast to coast by more than 4,000 leading jewelers who proudly display this emblem. Agency for Longines Whitnor watches.